Hello my friends, it is your brother Hampton from Hybrid Calisthenics. I want to talk about a mindset shift that I had that was really a game changer for my fitness journey and really made things a lot simpler. I hope it can do the same for you. Now before I start, I want to ask you a question. If you had unlimited time, motivation, and energy, everything you needed to have the ideal fitness plan. A lot of us have this ideal fitness life that we, we think we would do if we had enough time, we would do if we had enough money. So think about what that is. Or phrase another way, think about training hard. If you think, if you had to train for an incredible event and you're like, well, I had to train for this. What does training hard look like in your mind? Now to get this conversation started, I wanna talk about how it was in my mind for quite some time, most of my childhood and the early part of my adult life. So my father was in the military. I think he was special forces or something. I don't know the details, but he had a little squad and he used to tell me stories when I was a kid about how hard it was to train in the military. And there was a story that he told me that always stuck with me about how at the end of this three day long excruciating hike, he would fall asleep in between steps. He was so tired, he'd be like, oh. And then each time he, his foot hit the ground, that would jolt him awake just enough for him to lift up his other leg because they were in a line and he had to keep going. And this wasn't an isolated incident. There were a lot of other things. They talked about rope swings, rope climbing, way above the ground to where you would die if you fell, and then rolling down a hill until you were vomiting. So in my mind, I was like, wow. So this is what it's like if you're training to fight for your life. Now, fast forward a decade or so, I'm in my adult life and I ask him, you know, cause I'm thinking about these stories and I think, dad, that wasn't a healthy way to train. You're, you're not really thinking enough about rest time. You're not thinking enough about allowing the body to heal. And you're not necessarily growing more muscle by going through these dangerous, excruciating activities. And he told me, oh no, no, you're right. It, it really wasn't about being healthy. It was really about preparing us short term to have the mental endurance to fight for our lives and be in these hellish conditions. So even though he trained really hard, whether he was aware at the time or not, he came to realize that this was not necessarily the best way to train. So when we think about our ideal fitness routine, it's usually very grueling. So let me just cast a vision for you. A lot of people will say, well, I'd wake up my ideal fitness life. I'd wake up at 5 a.m. I'd go for a five mile jog and then I come home and I would do stretching or yoga or Tai Chi, whatever you like. I would do that and then I would go hit the gym and I would exercise for an hour. I would lift weights and then I would go to work. I'd be very productive and I would spend eight or nine hours working. And then after work, I would hit the gym again. And at night I would have my ideal water routine, an ideal diet plan, etc. So you think about all those things. And while it's not quite as extreme as the military training plan I described, it is very lengthy. But you think about these routines, whether you're inspired by Rocky or you're inspired by Naruto, they're usually very time consuming and very intense. Now, here's the mindset shift that I had. Because eventually, if you start taking your fitness more seriously and you start researching it, you come to realize that a lot of these things are not necessary for optimal health. You think, what are my actual goals? And the most common goals, just to summarize, are something like grow muscle, increase strength, increase mobility, increase flexibility, lose fat. Everyone has slightly different goals, but that's usually the most popular goals. It's a combination of those. And you think, okay, I want to do that. None of that requires me to do the thing where I wake up at 5 a.m. and jog for five miles every day and go to the gym for two hours a day. In fact, just to give some quick facts, some people can get growth, muscle growth and strength in as little as one set a day. You can do that in one minute, two minutes. More realistically, if you want to have a full body routine that you follow week by week, you could take up to 10 or 15 minutes a day. And that's following some studies that show ideal muscle growth with three sets to failure. Now, if we take a break here and we consider the two things I asked you to consider, which is one, your ideal fitness routine, your ideal fitness life, and two, your fitness goals, what you want out of your fitness life, then you might notice there's a little bit of a discrepancy. I'm just talking to the average person here. And that discrepancy is that your ideal fitness life doesn't necessarily match with your fitness goals. In fact, in many cases, your fitness goals don't require nearly as much time and effort and energy and motivation and all that's required that you are considering in your ideal fitness life. So you think about why that is. Now, there's a lot of possibilities here that we can get into, but I think a lot of it is the media that we consume when we're young. When we watch stories and we watch cartoons, when the main character has to fight the villain, they undergo this huge training montage where they have to 
overcome hellish conditions. And it's just a struggle, right? And then you might combine that with some other stories you hear friends and family talk about. Usually older people talking about, well, well, back in my day, this is how hard I trained. Which, power to them, I'm glad they had that training, and I'm glad if they benefited from that. But it's not necessary for every person. Now, why is this such an important mindset shift that I'm talking about? Why am I making a video about it? Well, it's important because I believe most of us are not living our ideal fitness life that we think in our minds, right? Even me, if I'm thinking, well, if I didn't have to work and do hybrid stuff, if I didn't have to talk with other people, if I didn't have to manage this business, I could spend more time on my fitness routine, then it might look different. So we start thinking this, and I think most of us have subconsciously built up this insurmountable mountain in our minds about what an ideal fitness routine would be and all the possibilities that could come as a result of that. We could be stronger, we can be fitter, we can be more muscular, we can be leaner, and boy, we would look a lot more attractive. And these goals are great. It's fine to have lofty goals. It's fine to work out for hours a day. I've done it before. But I think while considering this, you might have realized that realistically, you're probably not going to get there anytime soon. And as a result, our ideals in our mind, the thing that we're building up as the ideal fitness routine, or the ideal anything really, becomes another barrier to entry. You're like, ah, because you've built up a way that you want to do it in your mind. You're thinking, well, there's just no way I can do that. It becomes a dream home instead of your actual home. So instead of a home improvement that you could do, like building a deck or building a new sink, it becomes a mansion. You're like, well, if only I could have that, maybe someday, but not now when in reality, most of your fitness goals, once again, increasing strength, building muscle, etc., you can have in a few minutes a day. So that is the mindset shift that I had. When I stopped trying to do a thousand push-ups a day, a thousand sit-ups a day, going for a 5K jog, I think all of which I've done, and maybe not at the same time, but I've done a lot of crazy fitness routines in my time. When I stopped trying to pursue that and trying to deal with the burnout of that, like, man, this is exhausting, I'm trying to do this every day, if only I could have a rest day, but no, because that anime character I watched didn't have a rest day. When we start realizing that we don't need to spend all this time, and we start crafting a routine around something that can actually build towards the goals we want, then fitness becomes a lot simpler. Then it becomes a lot more enjoyable. Then it becomes a lot more doable, even when we're tired. And if it's a long day at work and you're like, man, I just don't feel like doing an hour at the gym today, it's like, fine you can spend 10 minutes. It's 10 intense minutes perhaps, but then you still have that time. You still have that energy. And then if you build it intelligently, then you can have your foundation of your routine take five to 10 minutes and then other stuff. You're like, oh, then I'll go for a jog. Then I'll go on the treadmill. Then I'll bike a little bit. Then I'll jump rope. Then I'll stretch a little bit more. And you add that on so you can scale it from anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour, depending on what you're feeling that day. Then you really have something that's adaptable for the rest of your life. Now, what routine is that? If this is your first time watching me, you'd be like, well, this long haired weirdo is gonna sell me a routine, right? And yes, I'm gonna sell you a routine. It's on my website, hybridcalisthenics.com slash routine. I've decided to charge a million dollars a year for it. But luckily for you, it is 100% off. It has been at the very beginning and it will continue to be for a long, long time, if not forever. So it's basically free if you didn't get that. I know I can be a little confusing sometimes, but the routine is free. Feel free to check it out, hybridcalisthenics.com slash routine. That can be a great place for you to start your fitness journey. But I do want to emphasize something, and this is my fault for not making this more clear, but one of the reasons why it's called hybrid calisthenics is because you can combine it with other disciplines. Some people look at that and it's too simple for them. It's like, well, it's 10 or 15 minutes a day, but I want to spend 30 or 40 and I'm not gonna burn out. I just have that energy right now. You can combine it with other things. You can combine it with boxing training, with wrestling training, with jogging, with football, with, <laughs> with soccer, which is different uh, in different parts of the world. The ideal fitness routine is unique to each individual because we are all unique. Our lives are unique. Our goals are unique. Our family and life circumstances are unique. So all of that rambling is just to say that fitness might not be as complicated and as time consuming and as insurpassable, insurmountable as you might think. The first step might be right there for you. It might just be doing a single set of wall push-ups today. It might be a single set of squats today. It might be, hmm, I'm just gonna go for a walk today and then build from there. That's all there is to it. This is just a video for those of you who watch me and think, that's great, but I don't know where to start. 
I think this is a reasonable place where you can start. Just start doing something and then adjust as you go. And so the next time you see a shiny fitness person, you don't have to think, boy, I wish I could do that, but I just don't have the time. I just don't have the money. And I just don't have the motivation. You can think instead, hmm, the foundation of that can be built in a few minutes a day. And even if I can't get to quite that, that person might exercise for hours a day and reaps the final 10% of benefits. Even if I can't have that, I can start building with a few minutes a day and adding and changing as I go. And then when you look back a few years later, you might notice that you've built quite a bit of progress that you previously thought was impossible or very hard. My friend, those are just some thoughts. I hope they can help you out. Have a wonderful, beautiful day, my friend.